All right, we're back. Let's move on to the rear of the bike. Put all my tools away. So I'm gonna try to get the rear wheel up in here, get the caliper to go over it. I might have to take the caliper apart to get it on there because it came out really hard. It's gonna be even harder now with the new pads in it. And once I get the wheel up in there, then I'll put the shocks on it. A little bit easier to work on it without those in the way. All right, so these are gonna be in the way and we're gonna move them. So we're gonna move them. Move it, so move it. Okay, so rear wheel. Alright, so here's our new rear wheel right here. Well, not exactly new, but new tire, new bearings. So I'll try to get this flip this around obviously. The biggest problem is gonna get in that caliper on there. Everything else should be easy. So I'm about to jack the bike up a little bit. Take it room to get up in here, I'm not sure yet. That's going to be our first problem, obviously. Followed shortly by the brake. I think I'm pretty sure we're going to have to jack this thing up or something to get this in here. It's not looking like it's going to fit. Not even close. Even worse. Go up some more. Actually, I think it's a swing arm is up higher, it'll be easier. Yeah, it's up higher now. That made a big difference. Well, they got uh, tampons falling off the bike somewhere. Foam rubber, I wonder where that came from. Okay. Yeah, that caliper's gonna be far on. I can see it already. They are bottomed out against everything. I'm going to break to do that. Maybe slide that over that way a little bit. Maybe I'll squeeze it right there. Oh, that was a lot better. Go forward with it. That's a lot easier. All right. I'm going to drop the bike down a little bit. Get to the, the, we have to get the pads and the caliper at this point. That's 
a big bugaboo right now. I think it just went on its own. That was the easiest I ever had to do that one. Just lower the bucket. You have to wait until the bike do it. So did it actually go in there or not? No, it's not going in there. It's just jamming in there. Not yet. It's not hitting on a tire like it was before trying to get apart, so that's the biggest problem getting past the tire before. Looks like caliper's just falling in there like it's supposed to. It did. I'm telling you, that's the easiest I ever had a rear brake go on one of these. Yeah, it just fell right in. It's like, like nothing. Can't believe it. That was slick. Okay, well, before we get too far, get the axle spacers in here. So there's a big ass spacer that's got to go over here before it gets too far down. It resembles this one here. Now, if you can put the small one against the swing arm, you can put the big one against the swing arm. The bearing's really small in there, so you don't need a lot of area. So put the small one against the bearing and the big one against the swing arm. Gives you more support. So we just wiggle this around a little bit to get that up in there. Like that. So that one's in. At some point this has to go in there also. This is probably a good time to start thinking about that, but it's gonna take two hands to do that. And then we got the other spacer over here, which is still on the axle. This has to slip in from this side, but we can get this loud because we've got access to it. Yeah, I can't believe how easy that went in. That's just that almost made up for all the swing arm problems. <laughs> I'd rather fight that than that. Okay, we'll move down a little bit more. I left the shocks off so I can change the height of the bike by moving the swing arm, not moving the bike. Makes it a little bit easier on me, I'm thinking. I'm not sure. Okay, this spacer goes between the wheel and the caliper, so that needs to go in there. Probably before, not after. So I might have to jack it back up to do that because that's going to be. You now we can move the caliper up. Great. There it goes. Very good. Okay, so you know, having to see able to move makes things a lot easier. <coughs> okay, so everything's in one way. The only thing now is the belt to go in. fighting me slightly but not too too bad yet so these stupid guards get in the way of everything so far I've been able to kind of curl around don't we'll get too aggressive on that you don't want to break the belt or damage the belt so make sure you're up here in the front we look good so we need to go forward a little bit we need to go down a little bit. So if we go up in the air a little bit, it allows the wheel a little bit further forward easily. In this case, it got a lot worse, which is not the direction I want to go, so we can go the other way. Pressure, but not a heavy pressure. You know, it's probably about 10 pounds of force, not enough to broke a tooth. You don't want to get on the hammer and start beating on it, trying to get it to go in there. That's not the way to do it. You find a sweet spot, it will work on its own. Okay, belt is in there. So this is two teeth bigger up here in the front. So the rear wheel has to go forward, further forward than it used to be. There's no axle adjusters on these, so it's easy to do it now. On an older bike, you had to move the adjusters forward to make room to go forward with the wheel. One advantage is crappy design to use here, but I'd much rather have a physical hard stop. That does 
stupid ass eccentric so it don't work for squat. In my opinion. Okay, so we can either have this coming from the left or the right. I prefer it being on the right so you can pull the thing out. I don't remember which way this one was in there. I'm going to put it in from the other side. Sir, it up where it belongs. Okay, we're through that part. I have a caliper now. Okay, now we're into the frame. Centric part of that. All right, so we gotta draw off this. We gotta get past the bolt here. Okay, I'm back that way a little bit. We'll take that. Had to get the tank past the uh, lip on the other side, the boss. So now I just tighten this up. So this is probably backwards from how it used to be. Because now, when you tighten the axle up, it actually makes it looser. Usually when you tighten this thing up, it gets tighter. I have these centrics on backwards because I'm on the opposite side of the bike now. Obviously, they had the axle going the other direction, which is not the way I want to do it. See, as I tighten it, it gets looser. As you loosen it, it gets tighter. See, I'll look back. 100% wrong. So if you want to do it backwards, you got to reverse this. Now, what's holding that on there? Is it welded? Is it just laying there? I have no idea what holds that in there like that. I see nothing on there that's holding it in position. There's no flat spot, so it's probably possibly welded in there like that. I'm not sure. Let's give it a couple taps over the device and see what happens. It comes apart easily. We're happy. If it doesn't, we're not beating on it. to be moving so this actual has to go in the wrong way for this to work correctly which means you have to pull the stupid exhaust system off to get the damn thing out now I have had bikes where this is on the right side so I'm not sure what they did to make that work I don't know maybe they set it backwards <laughs> <laughs> 